Here are some examples for deformation of solids in fluid dynamics. So in this problem, the weight of 10 cars is pushing down on this concrete pad, which is going to compress it. Now, how squishy something is depends on the rate. Since we're only pushing this in one dimension and the force is perpendicular, we're interested in Young's modulus. And more particularly, we want to solve for the change in length. So let's rearrange the equation, and we'll get delta L equals FL over YA. We're going to plug in our values to solve for delta L. So this is the force of 10 cars. That's G that weigh 500 kilograms. The original length of this is 0.5 meters. Divide this by Young's modulus, so that's 30 times 10 to the 9th pascals. And the area, which is 80 meters squared. So when you plug this all together, you will get a Young's modulus, or not a Young's modulus, sorry, a change in length of 1.02 times 10 to the minus 8 meters. Now this seems really, really small, but it makes sense because you don't want your concrete you know, driveway or anything to sink half a meter every time you park a car in it. So let's look over to another type of problem. Okay, now in this problem we've got a person, and this person is swimming down here. And normally, you will start to feel a pain in your eardrum of whenever you get about 5 newtons of force. Now, note that newtons is caused by a pressure difference. A force is caused by a pressure difference. And in this case, this pressure difference is the difference from the atmosphere. But in this particular case, we're just going to treat that as a constant and offset. So we know that the pressure in the fluid equals the density of the fluid times gravity times the height that you are under. So if we rearrange this, we're going to get P over rho G equals H. Now we're going to use the fact that pressure is force over area, so that's 5 newtons over, be careful with units here, 5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared, divided by 1,000, density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times the acceleration due to gravity, meters per second squared, and you will get that the height that you have to go under is approximately one meter. So at about 10 feet, you'll start to feel a little pressure building up in your eardrums, which kind of makes sense if you go diving. And on to the next problem. So in this case, you've got this car sitting here. A uh, hydraulic jack just means there's some fluid in here. If it's pneumatic jack, it's air. If it's hydraulics, it's hydraulic fluid or some sort of machine oil. So you have this car pushing down here, and you want to push the small end. Now you know from Pascal's principle that the pressure at any point at any height in the fluid, equal heights in the fluid, is the same, which means the force over area at 1 equals force of area 2 over A2. And if you solve this for F1, like we want, you will get F1 equals A1 over A2, F2. Now we've got to make some rearrangements, so we'll get F1 equals, now these are circles, so this is going to be pi r1 squared over pi r2 squared times the force, which is 10 thousand newtons. You'll notice that these two pi's cancel out, and if you calculate this, your force is going to be equal to about 1100 newtons. And that's using Pascal's principle and why jacks work. So now we're going to move on to a problem involving Archimedes' principle. So with Archimedes' principle, we're putting this raft in this water. And you know that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. So if we look at this raft, you can tell that it's not accelerating. And the force is acting on it. We have the buoyant force, and then we have the weight of the raft. So we're just going to start this up like any Newton's law problem, ma, where your acceleration is zero. So you get buoyant force minus mg equals zero. 
keep rearranging this, you get your buoyant force equals mg. Now we know that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced, so that is rho for the fluid, g volume equals mg. Very quickly we can see that these g's cancel out, that is why I like working with variables. And let's plug in that this volume is the area of the raft times the height. All right. And we're going to solve for height, so we get height equals m over rho of water, which is 1,000, remember, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, a. Solving this, plugging in some numbers, and you will get that this raft only displaces two and a half centimeters of water, which is pretty remarkable, but that's because, well, the raft has a really big surface area. Four meters squared is pretty big, and water's pretty dense. So that's how you would solve an Archimedes principle. Key point, buoyant force equals density of the fluid displaced. And on any floating object, your buoyant force is going to be equal to the weight of that floating object. So one more problem combining Bernoulli's principle and the continuity equation. First, a little disclaimer about this problem. I have never measured an elephant's nostrils. So these are my best estimates. We're going to assume that the water is going to fall the length of the trunk. The start of the trunk next to the base of the head will be 0.1 square meters. The little nostril where it's going to come spewing out is going to be 0.002 meters. And I made a caveat that just said the pressure is the same at the end as it is at the beginning. Now, this equation, well, this problem, is going to use two equations. One is the continuity equation, and if you remember, that is A1 V1 equals A2 V2. This is because we don't know the initial velocities, and we're going to solve for them. The second is Bernoulli's equation, which is P1 plus rho G Y1 plus 1 over half rho v squared to uh, 1 equals p2 plus rho g y2 plus 1 over half rho v2 squared. Uh, this is just continuity of energy. So take a minute, write down these, and we'll see you with the continuity equation. Next slide. So if we start with the continuity equation, we're just going to put v1 in terms of v2. So we know that they're the same. We solve for v1. We get v1 equals a2 over a1 v2. So we're going to use this result. So we're going to put this result in Bernoulli's principle. So using what I gave you in the problem, the pressure at the end and the beginning are the same, so those are going to cancel out. We'll set y2 equal to 0, so that's going to cancel out as well. So our equation reduces to rho g y1 plus 1 over half rho v1 squared equals 1 over half rho v2 squared. Now if we look, there's a rho in every term, so let's go ahead and cancel that out, which means it doesn't matter what the elephant's shooting out of its nose as long as it's an incompressible fluid. And we will plug v1 in here. And we're going to do this on the next slide. So here I just subbed in what we got from the continuity equation in for V1. And then if we rearrange this, we get GY1 equals, I'm just going to move this to the other side. So we get 1 over half V2 squared minus 1 over half A2 over A1 quantity squared V2 squared. Let's multiply everything by 2 to get rid of those 1 halves. So we get 2 g y1 equals v2 squared minus a2 over a1 squared v2 squared. Pulling out the v2 on that side, we're going to get 2 g y1 equals v2 squared times the quantity, 1 minus a2 over a1 squared. Almost done. 
So we'll just move this term over 2g y1 over 1 minus a2 over a1 squared square root of that equals v2 plugging in all your numbers you'll get something around 20.0 meters per second which seems a little big but um, I wasn't sure on the ele elephant's nostril size so we'll roll with this now we plug this back into the continuity equation where we had v1 equals a2 over a1 v2 and you'll get an answer that is 4 meters per second. So I hope that's helpful and uh, I trust you'll go through the calculations yourself and let me know if there's any issues. Hope all goes well and good luck.